Aloha and welcome back to this, uh, the Two Wheel Revolution here on thinktech.com. I'm Peter Rossig. Today we are going to continue our discussion of electric bicycles with somebody who really knows what he's talking about for a change, um, an author, a blogger, uh, and a, an avid electric bike rider. His name is Dave Hogan, and um, he's talking to us from, uh, from Florida, but he's got... Uh, fingers in all over the country, as I understand it. Uh, and and just uh, so, Dave, welcome to the show. Thank you, Peter. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. All right. So let's just dive right into the book, because I think that's what, uh, you know, among the many things you're doing seems to be one of the most valuable. Tell us, the book is called E-Bikes, Putting the Fun Back in, Into Cycling and Life at Any Age, which uh, I think we're both in that certain, uh, you know, men of certain age. And uh, so uh, that's particularly interesting to me, although I think there are a lot of younger writers. So tell us about, tell us, tell us about the book. Give us, give us the pitch. Why should we be buying it? Yes, the book is written uh, really for anyone who might be interested in e-bikes, but especially for senior adults. That seems to be the largest target market so far here, particularly North America for uh, e-bikes. And as an e-bike rider, you probably have the same experience, Peter. I constantly would would run into people who would stop me on my bike, ask questions about my e-bike and the, you know, the motor, and uh, just very curious about it. A lot of seniors were interested in e-bikes, and so there didn't seem to be a book that fit that niche. And so I, I worked for about a year putting this book together, interviewed a, a lot of people, and uh, it came out in December of 2021. All right. Uh, so it's not a, I know there are a lot of uh, e books about e-bikes out there and some of them are pretty technical and pretty, pretty nerdy, but I take it this is much more for what we would call the average reader or everyday reader. Yes, exactly. It's for the, you know, kind of the layman version of the book. It's not uh, a, a mechanical, you know, how to tear your bike apart, put it back together type book. It's uh, uh, how the average consumer who uh, maybe you know doesn't have a background in, in bicycling at all uh, can learn everything everything they need to know. You know how to choose an e-bike, how to uh, ride safely, how to protect the bike, you know, from theft and other uh, risk. Uh, so just a broad based look. It's not brand specific. I'm not promoting any one bike or brand in the book. Try to be careful about that and uh, just give a good introduction. All right, that, that's terrific. So it sounds like it's a soup to nuts kind of thing for uh, you know the person who isn't really used to dining at this table and uh, uh, needs uh, looking for really kind of advice from somebody who isn't uh, pushing except for the e-bike riding pushing a cause, which yeah, I think so, yeah. So, yeah. So Peter, my favorite part of writing this book and the part I've had probably the best feedback on from readers is each chapter ends with a profile of a senior adult e-bike rider. And I got some amazing people to share their stories with me. Many had had uh, significant health uh, problems. They were unable to, you know, literally walk around the block, but, but an e-bike gave them a new uh, a, a lease on life, uh, something to get excited about, improve their health. And so I interviewed 12 people from all over the world, really, uh, you know, from Europe and the North America at least, and, uh, it was fascinating. I was inspired hearing their stories and how how many different ways e-bikes are improving pe people's life. And so I'd encourage you, if you pick up a copy of the book, be sure, if you read nothing else, read those 12 profiles at the end of each chapter. Well, for the next edition, I think you should go to China or Japan and get uh, right. get it really to be worldwide. But so right. give us a story. Give us an example of, uh, you know, whether you use names or not or whatever. Give us a story of somebody who uh, whose life really was changed by uh, by getting on an e-bike. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Uh, Miriam Lieberman, she's a doctor in Cal or retired doctor now in California, uh, had had significant health problems, over 20 surgeries. She was largely disabled. There was a time, in fact, when she couldn't even drive a car. And uh, uh, she was introduced to electric bikes by, you know, friends there in Southern California who saw her predicament. And she started actually riding her bike. She was still working at the time to, to uh, work. It was not a short ride. 
And she began to build up her stamina and realize, hey, I can do this. And now she she and her husband have have taken, uh, they're retired now, have taken trips all over the place, you know, with their bikes. And she's a uh, actually a more active rider than I am. And she's a, a credits the e-bike with improving her health. There's another woman, uh, uh, Jane uh, Borden Kaplinski, who uh, had had health problems since childhood. She was diagnosed as a teenager with rheumatoid arthritis. And then, uh, you know, the problems just kept compounding. Later in life, she fell and broke a hip. And so she, too, was, was, was pretty much disabled. She still walked with a limp. And she's in, as she tells me, she was in pain pretty much every day. However, oh, and she has balance issues, too. So a two-wheel bike is out. But put her on a three-wheel electric trike, and she's off to the races. So that has been her uh, uh, key to adventure and independence is to ride an electric trike. Uh, and so each of them have different stories, but just so inspiring. Wow, that is a great, great story. It sounds sort of like the person who stutters, but when they start to sing, the stutter goes away. So <laughs> yes, you get exactly. on the bike and it's uh, you're 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 ready to travel there. All right, well that that's terrific. We'll we'll get a picture of the book up on the screen uh, pretty soon here. And tell us, just um, we're all enthused. How do we get a copy? Okay, it's available through most of the you know the online sellers uh, from. Uh, Amazon and Apple and Barnes and Noble, those types of uh, of online uh, book distributors. So you can go there and look for, you know, e-bikes, putting the fun back in, into cycling and life, you know, at any age, it's the name of the book, or just look for my, you know, it might be easier to search for my name, Dave Hogan is the author, but uh, uh, it's, it's really available. It's in a paperback format, which is it's a popular, there's an e-book version format, uh, this is, of course, the cheapest version. And there's also a, a, a hardback version. All right. Very good. Um, how are sales going? Uh, steady. Uh, I don't have the uh, marketing budget. I, I, this is a self-published book, so I didn't go through a, a, a known publisher. And, and so I've done some marketing. And uh, it's still the sales have held up really well. Uh, you know, a low but steady number. And I'm, I'm pleased with it. We, of course, love to Great. see I'd like to see more people get the book, not so much for my benefit, but because I think if anyone who's interested in e-bikes, particularly seniors, will really find find the book beneficial. Terrific. So let's jump back a bit and talk about you and, and your life before all this, about your career and what, you, what you've done uh, up to now. Yeah, interesting, Peter. You and I have a somewhat similar background. I was a uh, journalism major in uh, college. Uh, and uh, w was a newspaper reporter for about five years uh, where I was a young man. And uh, it's a young man's job, believe me. Yeah, yes, it is. And my last job was covering finance and business for a daily newspaper here in Florida. And that kind of led me off into a tangent and became a uh, financial advisor and got my certified financial planner license, which I still have. So I have never, though, lost my love for a good interview and for writing. And so that's why. Now that I'm at least semi-retired, I'm still working, but not full time. I started the blog and uh, uh, wanted to, to have that creative outlet. Honestly, it's not really a money-making venture for me. It'd be nice if it was, but it's not. But I enjoy it and feel uh, I like to find stories I can write about that uh, will be beneficial to the readers. Yeah, and you seem to have done that. People's stories are the best stories uh, in, in, in my uh, estimation. I read somewhere that you and your wife, when you married some 46, 47 years ago, gave each other matching bicycles. Is that, uh, was that right? We did, yeah, back in the days of uh, yeah, Raleigh, three-speed bikes, if you remember those. And, <laughs> that, uh, that does date us, doesn't it, back in the day of the three-speed Raleigh? It does. They were beauties, candy apple red, you know, the white wall tires. They were, they were pretty bikes. Uh, so we rode those for many years. Uh, and uh, when we had... You know, our first child, we got the, the bike seat on the back, you know, a bike for the child. And so that, those were, uh, uh, I guess, I, you know, really fell in love with bicycling as a child like many of us did. It was yeah. our first way of getting some independence. You know, you could be free to roam around the neighborhood somewhat, especially back in those days, you know, before cell phones and so much crime. You know, I was a typical kid back in that day where, what time is dinner? Okay, I'll be back. And I'd be off for hours on my bike, you know, 
parents had no way of contacting me or vice versa. So it was my way of exploring my town. So yeah. I've never lost that love or enthusiasm for it. Oh, terrific. Uh, I think, that, you know, you look at children today, but you think there's so many things you can do as a child. And somehow we're along the way, there's some turning point where you lose that childlike enthusiasm for things and, yeah. and the inquisitiveness or whatever. But uh, it seems like for bicycling, you you've stuck with it all along. Is that is that you've been bicycling all through or did you kind of interrupt and then come back? Yeah, kind of yes and no. I've always owned a bike. It was honestly uh, after those young adult years when I got busier with my career and family, the bike sat in the garage more than I rode it, to be honest. But it was always there. I always kind of considered myself a bicyclist, but I didn't ride much. Uh, and it really wasn't until the the uh, electric bike came out. I bought my first one, oh, probably not more than about five years ago. It's really not been that long. And, uh, oh, boy, you know, that was a whole new game. And my love of biking really took off. And I ride far more now than I ever did before. Okay. So for the record, how many electric bikes do you have? <laughs> two right now that's not nearly enough i have two i keep telling my wife you know, i need a few more but yeah and she probably says well you can only ride one at a time so <laughs> so uh i know you in the book you don't want to go into specific brands but i think a lot of people would wonder uh what is it what kind of bikes does a guy like you have yeah of course like all of us you know, i have a budget so you know i have some dream bikes that would be nice to have but I have good good quality bikes, but not terribly expensive. I have a, a Pedego Boomerang bike and a good solid bike that, uh, yeah, it's giving me good service. Actually, I think that's the Pedego in the uh, photo there with this. The yeah, step- I think we'll, we'll get that photo up. Uh, yeah, step through frame. Yeah. And then I have a, a, a smaller 20-inch uh, bike, uh, a Magnum Pathfinder. And so... Really, I love both of the bikes. They're very different. One's 26 inch, one's 20. Um, but and so they're somewhat different. For short rides, I, I enjoy the Magnum. For longer trail rides, the uh, the larger Pedego bike is very comfortable. Interesting. Neither of those are fancy or, frankly, terrifically expensive, I don't think, are they? No, Pedego more than the Magnum, but uh, no, compared to, you know, Gazelle or some of the other brands out there that might be on my dream list someday. Uh, yeah, they're reasonably priced and, and good quality bikes. Yeah, I think you can obviously spend almost sky's the limit, but you really don't have to, especially getting started. You can start on a, on something like the Pedego, which I think is just very functional. Yes. Okay, so, but only two bikes. <laughs> yeah, that's a that problem. Can... So how did you start? What did what got you to start? Did you have some kind of a health issue or if you want to talk about it? But uh, what brought, you know, you had those, uh, maybe it's still those Raleigh's or whatever in the garage, but then one day you went out and bought an electric bike. And what, what was it that made that happen? Well, you know, part of it was, um, people don't believe me when I say this, but not all of Florida is flat. The section I live in here in central Florida actually oh. has quite a few hills. And we had uh, we had a couple of uh, since we're talking brands, Electra bikes is a common brand, you know, made by Trek. We had a couple of you know non-electric. My wife and I did Electra bikes, and in our neighborhood and surrounding area, it was pretty hilly. And as we were getting into our sixties, uh, it was becoming more of a challenge and and just not as much fun to ride those bikes anymore. And uh, heard about electric bikes, started doing some research. You know, went to a couple of shops and looked at them and uh made the switch and have never looked back and uh you know everybody loves their bike that they have there's all kinds of good bikes out there but to me i would never own one now that you know it's not not electric it's just much more fun and easier to ride particularly at this age Mm -hmm. all right um actually you know my story is somewhat similar my wife and i were doing a lot of bicycle touring in europe uh on conventional bikes and uh, one day in, in Holland, we were going along the coast and we were riding up and down these these dunes. And uh, it wasn't the most fun I've ever had. It was kind of wearying. And then all of a sudden, uh, these two people go whizzing by. Uh, 
and uh, you know they were old. <laughs> even uh, yeah. even today, I would have described them as old people, and they were just going as fast as they could I could imagine. And I looked at them, and when we got to the next stop, there were their bikes. I looked at the bikes. Sure enough, they were electric bikes, and these yes. people were uh, you know out and and uh, certainly enjoying themselves that day more than I was. So uh, it's uh, it, it, it is something that when you can, you can, if you've ever written, and most of us have, you can come back to it in, in a whole new perspective. Uh, so I, I really, I hear you. It's really terrific. Yeah. Uh, the, other, the other thing on your blog, I guess you talk about places that are good for bicycling. Uh, and uh, I, I noticed Mich there was a town in Michigan and uh, I imagine there are good places in Florida. What, what makes a good place for, uh, for bicycling? What makes a town bike friendly? Yes, of course, good infrastructure about that. I mean, uh, good bike trails, you know, my preference is for paved, but there are some really good trails that aren't necessarily paved, but if they're in good condition, that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, and where, where you can feel safe riding your bike, that's one of the big uh, factors that keeps people from riding bikes period because they don't feel safe particularly of course here in north america compared to say netherlands where you were riding you know, over there the bike infrastructure is so good but over here you know people don't feel safe particularly you know in north america we think we're doing a good job we paint a little white line on the existing street and call it a bike lane and it's three feet wide i mean really he wants to be in a three foot wide bike lane not right next to a truck doing 45 or 50 miles an hour so, you know, people don't feel safe unless there's good bike infrastructure. And then some towns go out of their way to, to uh, cater to bikes. You know, they provide good bike racks in their downtown areas and, you know, uh, cafes and things are welcoming to bikes, maybe let you recharge your battery while you're having lunch, you know, uh, all those sorts of factors just where you feel like, hey, this is a town where I'm welcome as a biker. And then, of course, scenery. It's always nice if you have some some beautiful scenery to look at uh, as you ride. Yeah, that, that's for sure. And, and, you know, I couldn't agree with you more about the safety consideration. Uh, this program talks about electric bikes. We also talk about electric scooters. Even here in Hawaii, electric skateboards are, are big, even electric one wheels. But the main thing I think that keeps people off of them is the uh, feeling the perception sometimes true that it, they're they're not safe. Uh, yes. Yeah. And the infrastructure here in North America is improving, but it's still way behind. Uh, you know, at least uh, the better better parts of Europe. And uh, uh, yeah, yeah, but I think there's it's going to get better. Yeah. You know, it may not help you and me, Peter, but I think in another 10, 15 years and another generation, America is going to be uh, uh, much more bike friendly than it is today. There's some exciting plans on the way on the drawing boards and i think that city planners and traffic engineers are beginning to wake up to the need to make uh our streets not only bike friendly but pedestrian friendly you you know it's, it's unsafe to walk in america which is a, a sad commentary but it's true yeah i i agree with you you know the netherlands obviously copenhagen places like that and, and it always struck me in the in in amsterdam for example First of all, bikes outnumber bikes outnumber people, not to mention cars. But the the difference and and there's the infrastructure is much better. But I also think uh, in, in Amsterdam, every automobile driver has been and probably is now a cyclist, mm -hmm. and every one of them has had uh, you know has their kids, has their parents, yes. their grandparents on bicycles. Yes. And uh, so when they're driving around, uh, they are they they have a certain, you know, I'm sure there's an irritation factor like everybody else when there's 20 bikes in front of you at the stoplight and you have to wait for them to go forward. But they know in their, you know, in their being what uh, that, that safety is important and that they, uh, you know, that they don't want to be responsible for uh, something terrible happening to somebody else's kid or grandmother or wife or whatever and so you see people you see uh well-dressed women bicycling along you see them riding side saddle kids riding side saddle on the back uh i wish i could wish there were a few more helmets in that town but yeah uh, that's that's their lookout so 
I, and, and what's your feeling? I, I noticed your pictures obviously are all all you're helmeted up and uh, you talk in the book about helmets and the importance of that kind of thing. I do. I think helmets are very important. Uh, you know, even a fall at a low speed, if you just, you know, getting some people are getting on their bike, kind of tumble and fall over <laughs> first time. And uh, I, I, I've done that. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't take much. I mean, your, your head is, is not that well protected. Skulls can break and right. you just don't want to hit a skull against pavement. It's not an equal match. Yeah. And, uh, so even in this even at a low speed. So uh, if, you know, particularly if you're going a bit faster, uh, but I treat it like a seatbelt. You know, you just don't start the car. You don't back out of the driveway without the seatbelt in place. And I'm the same way on the bike. I'm just I'm gonna have the helmet on before I before I turn the motor on on the bike. All right. So um, what's next for you? Are you uh, gonna do another book? Or are you gonna con How are you gonna continue to promote uh, electric bicycles? Well, of course, I've got lots of, just a personal note, got lots of trails I want to ride. I keep a good bucket list of uh, trails I haven't ridden yet. And of course, my wife says, you know, you're not going to live that long to, live, <laughs> to ride all those trails, but I'll do my best. And it might be on an e-trike in a few years, or who knows, or, or a motorized scooter, but I'll be out there as long as I can. Um, interestingly, you, you mentioned about Europe. My wife and I are making our first trip uh, to Europe for bike riding this summer, and I'm going to to uh, uh, Harlem, uh, you know, outside of Amsterdam, right. and we're going to do a five day uh, uh, self guided bike tour uh, down through uh, uh, Leiden, and I'll probably mispronounce some of these towns. Leiden, Leiden is a Gouda? Is that the, the two? Uh, yeah, Gouda, Gouda is cheese. Gouda is good. Yeah, Gouda. And then, uh, maybe right. down the maybe. Theft. Yeah. And of course, uh, Utrecht uh, back up through that way. It's going to be a fun adventure for me. I've never done that before. And then I'm going down to uh, in, in southern Germany. There's a a large resort lake called Lake Constance, or the Germans call it Bodensee. And uh, there's a excellent bike trail that runs around the entire lake. Uh, I'm not doing the entire trail, but I'm going to do portions of that. We're going to stay in, in, along the lake for about a week. And so it, this this could be a real adventure. That's coming up later this year. Yeah, I'd love to do Lake Constance as well. I've, but uh, we have done uh, two or three trips in in Holland, and I guarantee you, you will love it. Uh, you those the towns you you mentioned. We started also in Harlem. Uh, the you know stayed overnight there and got uh, our bikes and then rode. Uh, sounds like pretty much the same route. But I would also suggest you take a look at. Uh, the North Holland route, uh, where you start in Amsterdam and you go up the uh, the I guess you'd call it the the western northwestern coast. And, okay. Um, we uh, we did that on a bike and barge. And when you get after you've done a few uh, of these uh, self guided hotel to hotel trips, like I think you're doing, where they move your luggage for yes, you, right? Yes. Uh, right. You, will, you and I think your wife will th will want to look at barges. The The barge goes along the rivers and meets you at the next place. So you get up in the morning, they take your bike off the boat, you ride for 20, 30 miles, whatever it is. And by the time you get to the next stop, there's the barge, the you know, a, a hundred passenger or so uh, river boat. So you don't have to pack and unpack. Your hotel comes with you, so to speak. And the tour we did in North Holland on a on a boat called the Arcona was one of our out of the eight or nine tours we've done, one of the best. So, uh, and I think you'll love Lake Constance also, just because you're going to be, you know, along the water, and uh, that's going to be awesome. So, um, got a, any any last words of encouragement for those people, uh, for my two or uh, three listeners who? Uh, might be considering getting an e-bike, give, give them the pitch. I would recommend as a first step, go to a local bike shop, uh, test ride uh, one or more bikes, uh, maybe rent a bike for, for an hour or for a half day and see what you think. Um, bikes are different. I don't like, I don't recommend particularly first time bike uh, e-bike buyers to buy online because you really need to, to test ride the bike, you need to make sure it's the right fit for you. Some of these bikes are pretty massive. I mean, I don't feel comfortable on that. You know, they look like motorcycles. Uh, 
so you, know, you, you got to be a, a big guy to be maybe be comfortable on those bikes. Other bikes are, are much more petite and light, lighter weight. So you really need to test the bikes uh, and make sure it's the right bike for you. And uh, a dealer also can provide, of course, a lot of advice. They can help fit the bike for you, assemble it properly, and then provide warranty work. As a matter of fact, my Pedico bike is in the shop today for warranty work. Nothing wrong with that, but just a, they do a one-year check uh, that keeps your warranty in place if you come in once a year for a check. So that's all the advantage of using a local dealer. And, uh, you know, don't be that concerned about we're talking about the mechanical details, or it's mid drive or hub drive and cadence sensors or torque sensor. You know, on your first bike, particularly, you're going to have fun no matter what you buy. And as uh, long as it's a proper fit for you. That is that is great advice. Go try it out. And uh, yes. Uh, yes, pretty much every bike shop, every town has a bike shop or two. And pretty much every shop now are rental places. You know, if you go to a, a bigger city that has bike rentals like San Francisco or places like that, you can rent a, a, an electric bike for a day. They'll show you what to do. It doesn't take long. That's terrific advice. Try it out before you put a thousand or whatever number of dollars down on something. And and buying online is 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 risky i think but uh, you know if it's the way if it's the only way that works for you that's what what works but really sure. having a, a dealer who knows what they're doing is the best thing Bye. Dave, i really want to thank you we're coming to the end of our of our half hour here uh you know it really is encouraging uh to uh find somebody uh who are who's willing to spend the time and effort to promote e-bikes uh, not because they're going to make a fortune out of it, not because they're, uh, you know, they're in it for the business, but because they really want to have people uh, take advantage of them. So I really appreciate what you're doing. Thank you for being on the show. Come to Hawaii. We're getting more and more bike structure all the time. I would and, love to. Uh, uh, yeah, we're still, we're, we're kind of halfway between the uh, the separated bike lane and the painted uh, painted stuff on the street. But we, the city yeah. government here is committed to making the place more bike friendly. And we have a good bike share system and um, a lot of stores. So um, thank you, Peter. It has, been, it has been a pleasure to talk All with right. you. Have a great trip in the in Amsterdam and Lake Constance. You will come back after you do that. We'll, we'll have another show and you'll tell us awesome. all about it. I'd love to anytime. All right, Dave, thank you so much. Uh, it's been a real pleasure. And uh, thank you, uh, both of you, or all three of you, for watching uh, the Two Wheel Revolution here on Think Tech Hawaii. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. Aloha. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.